Well, hello. Uh, we are Opal Ocean. We're Australian guitar duo. My name's Nadav, and uh, this is Alex. Hey, hey guys, how you doing? Yeah, thanks hey. for making time for us, man. Oh, sorry, absolute pleasure. Yeah, we're yeah. super excited. You've obviously just released a new album, so we're yeah, it came out the day before yesterday. Yeah, it's crazy. Fresh, 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 super fresh, yeah. fresh out the box. Yeah, oh, love that new <laughs> album feeling. <laughs> so just just getting a bit of background info on yourself. Mm. Uh, I guess generally, who did you grow up listening to? I was my parents' record collection was mainly kind of Jody Mitchell and Neil Young and nice. Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young as well and that kind of thing. And then my dad was kind of into Pentangle, so it was a bit of Bert Yanch okay, kind cool. of mixed in there. They didn't go very heavy, like the heaviest was probably like Steppenwolf okay, cool. and ELO. But yeah, loads of the kind of folky guys. John Martin was obviously yeah. like an influence on, on what I've done since. And then. I never, I never rebelled against my never parents' rebelled. music. Oh, okay. Not against cool. my parents' music taste. It was too good. Yeah, nice. So what am I going to do? Listen to really bad stuff just to like, <laughs> like, oh, you're going to listen to Robin. Yeah. Um, but right. yeah, so we started, and then yeah, obviously when I, when I started getting into music, I started introducing stuff back to them. I mean, I was so proud of my mum when I got in the car, and she was listening to the first Presidents album really loud oh really and awesome. singing along I was like this is lovely so, so that means you guys went to a few concerts together then surely uh, having uh, the same musical taste or yeah I'm trying to think what gigs we went to I mean saw, saw the Eagles oh, that, was a, that was a that was a family trip I'm I might be making this up but I'm pretty sure we saw the Monkees okay yeah. but like not obviously not all of them but like at least like three Monkees that's good enough because I, I just remember not I remember Stepping Stone really clearly yeah I remember okay, being on my dad's shoulders listening to Stepping Stone it was awesome such a good song yeah nice cool man and so did you have any guitar heroes or you know somebody that was more on the guitar side that were like you know I wow I wish I could play like this guy or that, that kind of motivated you to yeah, pick up the guitar really in the first Yeah, place. well I think when I was, because I was messing around and I was playing, I mean the main reason I started playing instruments was I played a bit, I had like keyboard lessons, so I was learning a bit of piano and I played a bit of drums. And then I was in a band playing bass, but to be honest, the only reason, the only reason I was in a band playing bass was because my friends started a band. And were like, we're going to play guitar, he's going to play drums, if you want friends, you're going to have to play bass. Yeah. So I kind of learned... He's the bass player. <laughs> <laughs> So I learned the bass so I could hang out with my friends. And then I moved across to guitar and then I started writing. And then, I mean, it still hadn't really clicked that it was definitely what I wanted to do at that point. It was a very smooth uh, way to get into it, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. I, mean, I was playing electric guitar, I was playing a pink Aria Pro 2. Lovely. <laughs> um, so I was playing that. And then when I first played like a steel string acoustic, something just clicked. I was like, this is fun. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't, I mean, it was a good guitar. It was, a, it was an Ovation Celebrity Deluxe. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. They are, they are yeah, nice. Yeah. Not very good for percussion, mm. but nice to play. Very, yeah. um, so I played one of those in, in like the local music shop, and that kind of clicked. I was like, this, this is interesting. Ooh. Because I'd played bass and I'd played drums, I'd kind of, yeah, I was just putting some of the bass techniques that I'd learned on the guitar, and then obviously started adding in the kind of more drum-related stuff later. So it was seemed like a kind of home for everything that I'd learned. Yeah, fair enough. I, it, we had a similar experience where, it, you, get, you know, you get to that stage where you try different instruments and we were predominantly electric guitar players and then yeah. that click, you know, I yeah. know exactly what you mean, that click is like, you pick up an acoustic and you're like something like, yes. Yeah, because you can this. have drums on them as well. Yeah, you know, that's I'd, yeah there's loads of amazing. I'd, I mean, the other thing that I always end up doing if I'm playing an electric guitar is I always end up sitting on top of the amp. Yeah. And that's because of the vibration thing. You can feel it. It's such a kind of visceral feeling because you're strumming it, and the more you strum it, the more it vibrates, like against your skin. It's yeah, it's quite a close relationship. And when you're on touring, do you, do you try somehow replicate that vibration on stage to get that feeling? Or? Well, I think you've got you've got it anyway because you're just playing the yeah, you're kind of playing that the same instrument that sits there, and it's yeah, it's, it's so much fun. I do like, I mean I do wake up. Every morning, I like I wander into the studio. I like getting in the studio really early, so I'm in there at about seven in the morning, yeah, and nice. I just sit in there with a the coffee and a guitar. I'm like, this is awesome. I'm having all my time. <laughs> and that's because you have a home studio, is that yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I've got a studio in my house, which is, and it's a nice one as well. It's not, it's not like a kind of rickety shed. It's, yeah, looks amazing at the moment. I re I kind of tidied up all the cables and bought a small sofa. Um, but yeah, it's, I love that room. It's so, it sounds so good as well. It's not. 
It's not heavily treated. I think that's every musician's yeah, dream is yeah. just yeah. a oh, yeah. no, it really is. nice place. Yeah, and being inspired by your gear and inspired Yeah, by because the I place, dreamt you know, about it. Some kind of magic that's cre been created yeah. in the studios, you know, where you get in there and you get creative. It's amazing. Yeah. I was having, yeah, having it in your, because I remember wanting it for years. Yeah. And imagine being like, can you imagine having your own studio? Cool. Can you imagine recording an album having in, an your, idea and in your pants? Just, yeah. <laughs> 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 so that, that kind of ties up to the next question where, mm. would you call yourself a prolific writer? Do, does it mean like, because you have the access to the studio right there, do you find yourself every day in there writing something new or is it is there some kind of process you go through is it does it take you time um to to write those songs yeah i mean i'm as prolific as my slow writing style allows yeah. so if i if i just strum chords and sang i'd probably write more okay but because i like making it interesting and there's a kind of quite a lot of like a mixture of kind of hand choreography and science that goes into like constructing what I do. So that does slow it down a bit. Without that, I would definitely write quicker. But it wouldn't be as fun. Yeah, fair enough. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, I mean, I've done, I don't think anyone's done more albums than me that I know in the time. Like, because we, we, there was a bunch of us that all kind of started at the same time. And yeah. I think, yeah, I think I've done the most albums, but I probably wouldn't say I write the most. So, yeah, Which is yeah. interesting. This I'm quite interesting. sure what that means. Yeah. So you, you <laughs> might you might save up a couple of like uh, riffs and and things and kind of save them maybe for an album two or three times. Down oh yeah, no, I've had stuff that's been lying around. Like smoked ice cream, the first track on yeah. the on the new album has been nearly on about three albums. Oh really? But I am I'm always looking out. Like I was, I recorded something on my phone in the car on the way here. Oh cool. Because I heard a rhythm and I was like, actually, that rhythm would sit with this quite old melody. And I was drumming on the seats. And yeah. Sticking nice. into my phone, so it is, it's yeah, it's constantly, it's constantly there. Awesome. And so, generally, what what does music mean to you? Like, how does it personalise to yourself? Well, I quite like treating it on kind of quite quite an anthropological level. I kind of go back to that kind of ancient form of communication and just that kind of. I mean, I'm very very into it as as communication, I try not to just do stuff that sounds nice. I try to get, especially lyrically, I try and, I try and say something with that, that that means something. Even if it is just to me, I don't, yeah, it's, it's that amazing thing. But then with instrumental stuff, I mean, I've, a number of completely instrumental pieces have made me cry, and that's such an amazing thing. Like, that's incredible, because it's, it's, yeah, the fact you can tell a story without without words is kind of it's a fascinating thing yeah for sure for sure and or, well i guess we should probably talk about the new yeah. album that yeah two days is pretty fresh fresh out the box yeah. yeah have you got i guess have you got any favorite tracks off your own album that you kind of you're really looking forward to performing live oh it is it's a really fun album live yeah i was probably like the last tour i did was my favorite tour i've, I've ever done because the material's just so it's so lively, like smoked ice cream has that kind of proper bounce to it. And then Hit the Ground Running is just really fun to sing. Yeah, um, nice. yeah. And then Fingertips is another really, it's really soul -y. It's much soulier than I've ever gone before. Like I actively avoided soul yeah, okay. vocally for yeah. a little while because there was just too What's many that? people doing it. And yeah. I felt like if I was going to do it, I wanted to, I want to be able to do it really well. I didn't want to, yeah, because it's such a, a kind of iconic vocal style. That if you dip into it badly, it's really embarrassing. Yeah, for um, sure. So I kind of felt like this album, might, a, I, c I could do it, and b, it's kind of gone a bit quiet. Because when I first, so you were concentrating on that, on that aspect. Then. Yeah, yeah, that was gonna definitely actually actively practice that. Or yeah, going to yeah. try and try and push it, try and actually, because cool. I'd stretched my range massively over the last few albums, and I noticed I was at, I've been adding. Um, adding loads of stuff live, like Teardrop, where I would have played it originally. There's the bit in the middle where it goes kind of relatively high. And live, everyone expects it, because on the record it goes down. Live, I actually go up instead, so oh, it starts cool. pretty high, and then goes stupid high, and then comes yeah, back oh, yeah, down. Yeah. And it's that, that thing, I remember the first, I saw, yeah, I saw a whole crowd kind of lean back when I first wow. started doing it, because they were like, yeah, they oh, he's up there. It. And I was like, whoa, yeah, he's still going. Yeah. And there's something, I got into that feeling of, 
I mean, yeah, with Hit the Ground as well, that high bit, when I first started doing that, people were like, I mean, it was that proper thing, which I have been trying to capture for a while, which is another kind of strange music effect on the brain that I, I've, I've had a couple of times, like Bobby McFerrin does it for me, like it's, yeah. so, it's so good and so clever and so technically difficult that the only human response that your brain can do is laugh. Yeah. Which is, that's an incredible thing. If you can, yeah, so I've... I, to I totally get you, you know, when, when you watch an act and they just... It's just they, they, so they, ridiculous. Well, they start thing. on such a high level and you're like, oh, that's amazing. And then they just, they push it. It's and you're just like... Further, like <laughs> you, you, yeah, you're yeah. just like, you, you sit there and you look at the person next to you yeah. and you go, did that just happen? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, that's, that's kind of what I was... What I was searching for, I think, and with across the whole record, really. And then there's other stuff. I'm trying to think what my favorite. I mean, I'll carry you. I wrote for my son, so that's quite special. Mm. And is, I mean, to be honest, when I first started working on it, I thought it might be the worst thing I'd ever done. It was really weird. That third, the third harmony, because the beginning and end is completely um, kind of choral. Mm. And I put the first two on, and I was like, this sounds rubbish. It's, I mean, it sounded, because it was just like a, a first and a third, and I think I was adding the fifth. It was just, like, a, it was so low and so dirty. Yeah. And I, I did it in the morning, so it was my classic seven o'clock in the morning, go in the studio with my coffee, be like, <laughs> when you find me far from home. I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> and then when I added the third harmony, my brother woke up and he came in and was like, did you just do this? This is cool, I'm down with this. I was like, oh. Wicked, <laughs> but it is that that one. Yeah, that was a, a kind of fascinating so you journey. You work by yourself uh, at the studio? Or, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I kind of, I, I, yeah, I do quite a lot of engineering stuff. If I want to do piano, because the piano's downstairs, the studio's upstairs, spiral staircase in between. Oh, cool. As it makes much interesting room sounds and all that. As much yeah. as I enjoy hitting record and running up and down the stairs, it is very nice having someone being like, "Are you ready? <laughs> sound, it's cool." Because I played a lot of piano on this record. I think I kind of really got into piano on this record. Cool. Yeah, um, it sounds like you're really pushing yourself every time you make something. You know, that's like the plan. Really trying to you know, do something even better than what you've yeah. done. Yeah, I mean, piano live was, yeah. was scary. Because I, I really hadn't wow. done that. And then playing, because the, the Good Fight was on piano, Carry You, I played on piano live as well. There's um, so only how, one how, of the songs. How song. are you dealing with that? I mean, is that getting into it. Like, I'm getting into it. Yeah. I was really getting into how visual piano is. That, that's the thing about piano, right? It's yeah. so nice, because I was like, there's that, and like, oh, I could add the... Th and the one way to do is that one note. Yeah. You know, like... And if I add that there, then I can... T oh, if I hit that slightly harder, it's actually in all the chords. You can have like a note running through the whole... And I got, yeah, I got... I loved it. Oh, that's awesome. And the way that you can move... I was like, one, one track was in C. Mm -hmm. C's lovely. The other track is in... Um, yeah, it's in B which is it's not easy piano key because it's yeah. very black notey. So yeah. that, that took a bit of getting used to. But it was great fun and it, I think it's a really nice thing to add to the set because it's such a different energy level. Yeah, especially going from, you know, acoustic guitar where you're doing so many different little little things, you know, you're hitting, you're doing the drumming. Yeah. And, and then you, you know, you, you obviously have switched focus away from that sound. And, and I guess with piano, especially like, you don't get that so when you're listening to it you don't get oh i think they're looping you know because these days a lot of people just automatically think when they hear a complicated guitar part they go oh Must that, be. that person's no. looping but when it comes to the piano mm. no one questions it really they're just like oh yeah he, he's he's got it's he's in. doing his piano I, I loop very sparingly i loop, i think we had the loop pedal set up on my board and we used it i think on two songs yeah, it's just two songs. Yeah, nice. Over the course of like two hours, so it's very minimal. Oh, nice. But it's a fun, it's a really fun thing to play with. Yeah. I have to say, I really enjoyed uh, the little nod of guitar-y thing, the <laughs> sitar <laughs> thing. Um, uh, we're, we're yeah. like, we checked it out in the car yesterday, and, and we were like, wow, this is oh, it's actually a sitar. And we were wondering if it was, was it just a slide, you know, on, on a resonator? No, or no, it's like a proper that. one. And it was like, wow, so you end up tuning that sitar? And yeah, I mean, I had to learn... I had to do it again. I had to relearn Satari's thing because we did the whole album live from yeah. my from my house um, for the for the tenth anniversary. Which yeah, was, yeah, it was last year. So, and so I had to relearn the sitar, which was pretty. How did you relate guitar? Like, I mean, 
obviously the guitar thing is not a sitar, but how did you kind of relate the two together? Yeah, make that jump. Well, I tried to kind of cross it over in a few ways, partly just the, the, the tempo kind of map of the whole album. So it came in fast and dipped down and went back up. I tried to kind of map that across. And production-wise, I did want it to be like a nod to the production of the first album and try and strip it back a bit more. Obviously, the first album does have, like, Dream Catch Me is not a stripped back thing. It's not even acoustic. Like, it starts yeah. with a really loud 808 being just hammered. Um, but, I'd, yeah, I wanted to kind of reference the first album in kind of tone and, and feel. But I think because I avoided it for so long yeah. because... Because I'd done it, I didn't yeah, want to do yeah, it right. again. Oh, no, that's the first album. I was like, that's the first. Yeah, album. yeah let's not yeah, do yeah. that because it sounds like it could have been on the first album. So let's avoid that. And then, kind of kept moving around. The second album was very kind of synth based. Um, so there's loads of noises on that. Third album was again quite heavily produced, but with the guitar at the front. Fourth album was completely stripped back, just guitar. I do still think playing wise, that was that's by far the most complicated thing because there was nothing else on it. I really wanted to push the guitar. Yeah. So that for me was what this album is vocally. Oh, cool. And then the next challenge is to try and get both at the same time on the same level. Yeah, because obviously I, I heard on some of the tracks with the drums especially, they were really kind of pushed, pushed forward quite a bit. Mm. And uh, it's something, I guess, yeah, very different to some of those guitar focused yeah. bits, which is really nice. It brings, you know, a bit of, bit of depth to it, I feel. And yeah. how, how do you think you're gonna, I guess, tackle that live? I mean, live wise, this album's been the, been the quickest to yeah. arrange. It's just made sense immediately. That's awesome. Which is, is great. And I, th I think because I watched loads of, I watched loads of sessions. I was watching a lot of the, do you know the Tiny Desk sessions? Yes. yes. Yeah, I watched those. loads of those and I was trying to work out what would be, what do I want to see in the Tiny Desk session. In this In this yeah. format. And I was like, I want to see people that can play and I want to see vocals, but I want to see the vocalists like push it. I want to see like some, some balls vocally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I was kind of writing it around that, which is why I think the production never, it never goes too far. And every song does work with just an acoustic guitar and a vocal. But live, I've got a kick drum on my left foot. I've also got an octave worth of bass pedals. Yeah. I've got the um, Roland Makem and Hammond Makem as well. The, uh, they're kind of like organ bass pedals. Yeah. Nice. But with that, you can kind of, you can do, yeah, you can program it to anything. I did, I mean, there's some chords that I just press and the chord holds for a certain amount of time and then I switch to the next chord and I can play over the top of that. Nice. And I use the kick drum on the guitar and sometimes switch to the kick drum on my foot at the end, especially if I want to do like big strummy stuff. Like you can strum and do yeah, a four on the floor sure. at the same time, but you do lose, you lose a little bit of aggression. Yeah, it's yeah. just not quite as jangly. So if I want to jangle out there and then I can stamp on the kick drum yeah. and the four on the floor and then add like an octave lower with my other foot on the bass pedals, it gets it gets really fun. Yeah. Oh, I got really into like kind of polyrhythmic stuff between all of my limbs. That's awesome. So not just doing four yeah. on the floor kick drums because well, there is a limit. Yeah. We, we found much. like recently, like with our last album, everything's just you know on yeah foot on the floor mm. for all the beats. Yeah. A and we, we're kind of looking at our upcoming album later this year, and we're thinking it would be yeah. exciting to yeah get away from that a little yeah. bit and use some polyrhythms, especially with two of us. Oh yeah, doing you can that. really yeah. So Listen to, I'm trying to think who's my favourite. I mean, Mike Dawes for oh, polyrhythmic stuff is crazy. But if you want to, like, production wise, for really interesting kind of panning stuff, check out Cornelius, Japanese Cornelius. producer. Okay. He does a lot of really nice guitar stuff, but just the way that he spreads, the way that he uses the sound field is yeah. really interesting. I did, a, I did some recording with him a few years ago, and I ended up, I'm, I'm in a booth, and there's these two Japanese guys going, da, da. Da 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 and I was like ba 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 following these two guys shouting these and we did it so we so it was panned so the actual strumming patterns just like kind of relatively normal but the way it moved in your ears was completely bizarre so it's like kind of get 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 yeah it was this yeah it's really interesting way of working and yeah especially if there's two because it's really fun. I'll oh, check that out for sure. That's cool. <laughs> and um, with, with uh, collaborations on this album, yeah, um, say, yeah. you, you didn't have too many, but who was singing on uh, the track so long? Oh, Tessa Rose Jackson. She's one of my favorite people in the universe. She's amazing. 
She's, uh, she, yeah, she's a Dutch artist. We wrote, we wrote, well, we originally met up to write for her, and then we just, we worked together so well, I was like, can I have this as well, please? Yeah. And that was Stay and Take, which was on, on the album before. And she did a, a couple of versy things in that, and did harmonies in the chorus, and yeah, she played, played as well. She's just amazing all round. Like, she's much better at piano than I am. Guitar-wise, she's really solid. Did she play any piano on the yeah, album? No, yeah, yeah, if you look at her credits, she plays piano and pump organ on quite a few things, because ah, cool. I just thought, while you're here, <laughs> would you mind? Uh, yeah, she's, she's great. She's a fantastic writer as well. Nice. She does some really, she's been going really, getting really into visual stuff as well. She did, I think her last project was in an art gallery and with all synced visuals. Epically complicated yeah, stuff, yeah. but yeah, she's she's wicked, and I do think our voices work really well because if we're singing in the same in the same tone, I mean, there's times when I can't actually tell the difference. Wow, that like kind of my yeah, my head voice and her normal voice kind of have the same. So we've done yeah, we've done yeah, quite a lot nice of stuff. Plan. I want to spend I want to spend more time with that. I might do like an EP That'd be cool. and like really focus on yeah, kind of more interesting. Harmony. I think the harmonies on that are pretty good. They're quite kind of Everly Brothers. It's really, it's really important, you know, when you find someone that, like, hey, there's a certain connection. Yeah, this, this just you works. Know, you, you have to see how yeah. far you can push that. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah, I think an EP or something would be really cool. Fun. Uh, I've got, I've got a few EPs you, planned. You actually. also collaborated, um, say, so here with uh, Empire of the Sun. Here. Yeah, that was on the record before. Yeah, yeah that was shadow boxing. That's crazy high. Did that how line. did that happen? Like, how did you meet the guys? I mean, it actually happened because I met someone on a bus in North London oh, cool. and I was just about to just I was not, not a tour bus just like a bus standard standard, standard bus. bus yeah bus. there's no there's no other way of moving around North London there's kind of <laughs> few tubes um, so I was yeah I was I was on the bus and I bumped into a guy an engineer that used to work with uh, work with them and he was like oh you're heading out I was just about to leave to do some writing in LA and he was like oh you should write with you should write with Pete and the guys, it'd be awesome. You should definitely do that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that, that would actually be totally amazing. And then got an email, and he kind of introduced us over email. And then while we were over, hopped in the studio. That was fascinating. Seeing how they work. Yeah, obviously, I'm every time you collaborate, you're going to have a different experience of how. Yeah. You know, they blend together. I mean, they work in such a, a bizarre way, especially in terms of like melody construction. They do some really interesting stuff, like recording with the track in half speed and the vocal normal speed. Okay. Oh, wow. Because, I mean, it's weird, because I write quite fast melodies naturally anyway, um, but, but the guy didn't. So in order to get fast bits, he recorded half time over the track. And then took the fast bits from that, like really interesting, wow. like next level. That's a, that's a that's space really good interesting way about it. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. You should do that with some guitar bits. <laughs> yeah, so if you want something fast and melodic, you just sing a melody and then speed it up, which does make, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, awesome, man. And uh, I guess speaking of effects, well, tell us a bit of uh, about the gear that you used on the album. Like, uh, do, you, do you use many guitar? Pedals I don't think I used recording? any it, pedals recording wise. Pretty straight for the song. Yeah, very. I, I like keeping the acoustic guitar kind of as pure as mm. pure as I can, and then adding stuff around it to modernize it. Was there it. a main guitar you used, for example? Um, yeah, I've got kind of seven main guitars, which sounds ridiculous. Um, so there's two baritones. There's one that stays kind of in standard tone down, and there's a couple that sit in kind of a dad gadish, but. Again, kind of lower. I seem to go from C to C on those a lot. So there's, yeah, it was kind of any one of those. What do you use? Oh, they're Nick Benjamins. So it's a guy that works down in, on the south coast of England. Okay. But he's, he's an amazing builder. He's building, I think he's working on something for Mike Dawes at the moment. He's done stuff for wow. Khaki King. Yeah, he's really, like, he's yeah. really kind of in, in terms, yeah, for the percussive acoustic style, he's right, he's right out there. Is there a, a known, a more known brand I could compare that to? Like, do they? Like more like maybe an Australian Martin or I'd say yeah somewhere between like a kind of Maiton and a Loudon and kind of in that okay. in that kind of area but uh, he does different stuff for different people as well he really adapts to what you to what you need I noticed a uh, scratch plate is that right yeah uh, that, 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 uh, that's uh, I think that's what the similarity when, when I saw your guitar I was like yeah that looks exactly like 
Mike Dawes's with yeah. the scratch play there. So obviously it's uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, playing wise, it's an amazing time for players. It's loads of interesting, mm. loads of interesting things popping up all over the place. And and having obviously your own studio, how do you go about? getting such, such a good acoustic tone like do you have any secrets when you're micing it up or, or do you just kind of let the guitar I tend sing? To, I, mean, I use a lot of room mics so I tend to try and get the actual sound in the room so I'm using coals in the room um, for, I'm trying to think what I used on the guitar I think it was mainly the, the a Geffel pencil mic and I was switching between actually the Shure SM7B and the Geffel pencil it's quite a nice kind of composite sound um, and the Neumann, like the classic Neumann. So like kind of a stereo pair kind of thing? Or a stereo pair far away and then two different ones to get the different aspects of the sound. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think what else I used. I used Aston mics a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. They're, a, they're a British mic that's relatively new, but mm-hmm. it's doing, doing good stuff. Tell us a bit about, uh, I guess, the band that you're bringing over for the Australian tour. It's just me, on my own. So oh, it's just, just Yeah, I mean, this whole tour has been, been completely solid. So wow. it's just utilizing my feet and guitars and wow. voice and very, very minimal looping. Now so that, we, two tracks. that we actually talked about everything that you do, like, I'm actually very impressed about while wow, you're doing this by yourself. I, re- I thought you were going to bring a band. No. Do it by yourself, man. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I've, d- I've d- had a band for touring Human Love in the UK, which was not last year, but the year before, which I loved. I mean, I'm so glad I did that at that point because I learned so much about it when I came back to being mm. solo it was it was different because I played with the band for a bit I was like so it should feel like this when everything's right mm. and coming out of being a band back to being solo Isn't I can kind of get the same feeling can you yeah I can get really? that vibe it's kind of jamming with yourself in, in I'm book. definitely kind yeah. of yeah kind of on that in that space mm. now because I'm kind of improvising with with both limbs and the guitar and there's points where I can I, d- I kind of adapt the set and the kind of use of everything to whatever's going on so if it's really rowdy I can kick drum every track and I've got bass programmed for, for everything because the way I do it is instead of using it so the notes are just the notes it's like the bass line notes that I need are all at the bottom so my foot doesn't have to go miles away. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. And I can stay on the mic, so I've programmed most songs. Yeah, nice. So you can do the kick drum and the bass and the guitar and sing and keep it... Yeah, I mean, it's big noise. That, that, that I guess, goes back to your, your thoughts when you're writing it for the tiny desk situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I want to... just translate to the stage so well because yeah. you've just got everything. You just want everything to happen. Really? Yeah, yeah, happen at the same time yeah. so you don't... Because it's I've dug myself a massive hole because we released um, Up, Up and Away, which has a really cool guitar part. But in terms of the, the track, the track has so many things on it. Like the difference between the verse and the chorus is like a hi-hat, and obviously the vocals. So because of that, I found it, like, it was incredibly difficult to arrange. So I wanted to avoid that this time, so keep making sure all the singles I can just do, and they're good, and I don't need to worry about yes. it. Yes, yeah, of course. I might even take it a stage further. I might do like the record version and then as soon as I've done the record version work out like a promo version as well okay, yeah, so yeah. I don't because otherwise I get really attached mm. to other versions yeah oh, okay. and then I always because I can kind of feel that there's a, something not there yeah, it kind of missing. yeah it kind of yeah. bugs me and then it makes it less fun so I might I think if I do the arrangement early enough in the process so that I can go out for the like, blues fest mm-hmm. yeah, so that's the kind of setup uh, yeah, you, you're going to be using. For yep, that? kick yeah. drum, bass pedals. I've got like an SPDX sampler that runs down. I can actually loop mm. beats as well. Oh, and do you, um, do you know much about Byron Bay Blues Fest? I've done it, I think, twice, maybe three twice times. Now? Nice. I've been around quite a long time now, so yeah. I get a bit confused. <laughs> and you, you're obviously super excited to oh, yeah, come it's back. Oh, such and, a good uh, festival. I mean, last time, I mean, my favourite year. I think I saw 10CC and Credence Clearwater Revival oh, and Paul yeah. Simon. I think another year. So like the lineup's ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's always a yeah, it's a great place for it as well. Yeah. And um, do you think you're going to have time to hang out and see any other acts while you're Hopefully, there? Hopefully, fingers crossed. I mean, there'll be a bit of promo during the day. I'll obviously be running around like a lunatic a little bit, but I'm yeah, I'll definitely make sure I see 
see some stuff. Yeah, perfect. Well, we're looking forward to, uh, you know, having you back here in April and having you tour around. And yeah, uh, what, what song are you going to be uh, playing for us today? I was going to do Hit the Ground. Hit the Ground, get, awesome. Yeah, get right up there. Yeah, cool. cool. <laughs> looking forward to man. Thank you very Cheers. much. Cool. Lovely to meet you guys. And uh, hopefully we'll see you cool. when you yeah. come back around. Awesome. Yeah. Thank cool. you. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Wasted night spent on my own Lights are on but there's just me at home So I guess that's alright I keep falling down but when I hit the ground I know I'll hit the ground I keep a falling down yeah. When I hit the ground I know I hit the ground running It's a long and winded road Breaks me down but Come back twice as strong So I guess that's alright I keep falling down But when I hit the ground I know I'll hit the ground ready. I keep falling down It's so hard to keep on moving when you always the world left behind. So close I can almost see it, always greener on the other side. Wasted night spent on my own. Lights are on, but there's just me at home. So I guess that's alright. I keep falling down, but when I hit the ground, I know I'll hit the ground running. I keep falling down. Hey.